Okay. So what's the improvement tonight, Coach, is in some areas? Well, we did run offense. Uh, I, I, was, I was disappointed in the first half. We just we refused to run. Well, we ended up with ball screens and dribble handoffs and, and don't really scratch the surface of what's available for us offensively. And the second half was a little bit better, but we still don't. We've got to get better running offense. Played harder. I know we did play harder. Our right. transition defense was better. Um, and we were able to get some guys in the game that need to play. I've talked a little bit about KJ and his career. Rebounding, scoring tonight. Well, I, I, I said uh, on the radio that when it's all said and done, uh, he theoretically could be in the top ten all-time scorers and the top ten all-time rebounders. Uh, he, he is right now the all-time leading offensive rebounder. Second leading scorer, second leading rebounder, I think, on the, on the Final Four team. He's had a Hall of Fame career. You know, when it's all said and done, he's had a Hall of Fame career. Um, you, you, you look at guys who... Uh, we're in, the, we're in the top ten in, in, in scoring and rebounding, and those guys are Hall of Fame guys. You know, and, and, uh, he's worked so hard. He's such, he's such a wonderful guy. I mean, he's just, you can't imagine what a good guy he is and how, how good he is to deal with every day. And that's that's not just uh, people on the basketball staff. That's everybody in the Coliseum. Uh, that's, that's, that's all the, the, the faculty that have had him. Everybody raves about what a good guy he is. And, He's just, he's just, uh, he's what, he's what everybody would want, uh, you know, their son to be, or you, you, you wish you had all of them were like him. Obviously they're not, but, you know, and just got a wonderful pair of hands. Just a great, great pair of hands. Bob, do you uh, get in on him sometime for padding his own stats like this and dunks? Yeah, I did today. I did today. He pulled a fortune today. <laughs> Danny'd do that. Danny'd crotch one once in a while just so he could rebound and score it again. Uh, <laughs> then acted like I didn't. I didn't know what he was doing. But um, I honestly, I think he's a little tired. You know, day off will do him a lot of good. Well, that one trait though can rub off on a lot of guys. It's an effort thing, and just rebounding in general. What has that done for guys and your teams throughout the couple of years? Just seeing that and what, how he's made himself better. Well, he listens. I think that Mike. That, I think that's the that's the best thing. He, he listens. He's done a, He's done an unbelievable job with his body. Uh, you know, he was 215 pounds when he came in here. Um, he's, and he's he's been blessed with a wonderful pair of hands. I mean, you just don't see him. Some of our guys look like seals, you know, batting <laughs> balls around. And, and uh, he's if it's if it's close, he gets it. And, and he's. Uh, He's really learned to use his body well. He's uh, how much it rubs off on guys. I'm not sure, you know. Uh, but he's special. I mean, he is a he is a special guy. What's the one trait rebounders have that puts them all together? They all got great hands. The great the great rebounders have have great hands. The great rebounders I've had have had great hands. Which, which Bob, you know, which honestly is is uh, is probably the most important trait. I mean, you know, I mean, you think about guys that, that we consider some of the great offensive rebounders of all time. Moses Malone wasn't a big jumper. Paul Silas certainly wasn't a big jumper. Dennis Rodman wasn't a big jumper, but they had great hands. And and when the ball was anywhere near their area, they and, and they could get a ball on it. They they rebounded it. And I think KJ is much the same. Bryant was kind of inconsistent tonight in scoring. Is that a is that a problem? I thought he was really good today. Um, I'm sorry. I thought he was really good today. I thought I, I mean. Uh, well, he didn't score too much the first half. Did he? Well, I didn't want him to. Uh, I don't want him to force things. I thought he, he really forced things the camp game. Uh, made some made some really bad decisions, and he's got to let the game come to him. And he did. I mean, he gets 18 points, and that's 
There's nothing wrong with that. He, he let the game come to him instead of forcing things. And um, I thought he was good. I, I thought he was. Yeah, I thought he was good defensively. Uh, took pretty good care of the ball. I thought he made good decisions in transition. I think this was probably the best that he's been all year. Doing your point guard get 12 rebounds. Yeah. That means we're blocking out, which is a good thing. Uh, a lot of those balls bounced on the floor, which means that we had bodies on people, which is, uh, that's a heck of an improvement. The decision to put Paul in the game, was that due to defensive lapses, or you needed a, another shooter, or? No, or? no, no, Paul's, Paul's comes in and listens and tries to do what he's supposed to do, and some of those guys still, I think, they're, they're going to outstubborn me. And, and I just want to make sure they understand they're not. And you know Paul can make shots. Paul can make shots and he's going to play hard. You, you know what he's going to give you. Some of those guys, when you don't know what you're going to get from them, uh, it makes it harder. You know, when you have somebody you know, you know what you're going to get. If he gets an open shot, he's got a great chance to make it. He's not going to force things. He's not going to, he's not going to you know, over-penetrate and lose the ball. He's got, he's got some, a few deficiencies at the defensive end, but he works really, really hard. And, and I've had a lot of guys like that, that that at the end of the day, they end up being pretty good defenders. And I had a guy at Cincinnati, I told him, I said, man, I'll tell you, when you go in the game, it's like you got a green light, you know, that just goes around and says, take me to the basket, take me to the basket. And you got beat every time. I mean, and ended up, at the end of the day, he was, he was one of our better on-the-ball defenders. But he was, like Paul, he was a great kid, worked at it. Worked hard, made shots. Couldn't dribble, didn't. <laughs> you know, those guys you can deal with. There's the guys that think they can and can't. You know what I mean? It's the guys that can't dribble, try. Uh, guys try to make plays that can't. Those guys drive you nuts. How was Gary better? At the end of the day, I drive them nuts. <laughs> <laughs> How was Gary better today? Played so much harder, so much more assertive. I, you know, I think, I think, Mike, honestly, all those guys, you know, I went in at halftime and I told, I told uh, Kevin Noreen, I said, you know, Sweat, you're just not, you're not, my, my recollection of, of, of Sweat last year was going in the Minnesota game and just, I mean, creating havoc. Was really active, got his hands on balls, offensive rebounded, and done that. And, and today he did that again. And that's, that's how he has to be for us. He just can't stand around. Um, I told Pat Force that that was our second best rebounder in, in Europe, you know, when we went to Italy, uh, next to KJ. And then, you know, he's batting balls around like a seal, you know, and, and he's been in the first half. And he just, you know, we got to, he's got to play in a stance. He's going to get bumped. Shooting, you're in there, you're going to get bumped. And he, I thought he did a better job. He played so, I thought he played so much stronger. And he got he got a rebound that, that nobody else in the gym could get. I think you know he he, he went out of his area to go get one. He, that's what that's what we got to have from those guys. We got to have them be active now. You know now the next thing I think is tell Patty he doesn't have to shoot it when he rebounds it every time. <laughs> you know he can't pass it out of there. But, but I thought they were much. I, I thought Keaton Miles was much more active. Uh, and that's what Gary was. Gary was so much more active. But I think. The, the rebounding part of it was, you know, Gary's probably our best guy at getting to the ball, but we did a good job blocking out. Most of those rebounds really were balls that bounced on the rail, on floor. Coach, uh, sorry, go ahead. I know it's early and you got a lot of things to work on. How would, what would you prioritize? What's the number one thing that this team has to do to get better? Stop throwing a ball to the other team. <laughs> <laughs> you know, we... We're, we, we can live with throwing it out of bounds some, but you can't throw it to the other team for layups. You can't guard that. And we've been, that's, I mean, that's killed us. And we've just, we've come down and thrown it right to that, for really for no reason. Um, we've got to get that fixed. And I, and I said last night, the rebounding thing's easier because that's all effort. It's just getting up to go. Yeah, if you go enough, you're going to get some. But, but the other is there's some skill involved to it. They're just not used to they're not used to the athleticism and the length that they play against them. So you you've got to you've got to actually pass the ball. You can't throw it. We've got to get better.
going back to KJ, 29 13 is probably too much to expect from him for an entire season, but does he need to be the focal point for this team to, to find success? Well, I don't know if he's going to get 29, but he's got to get 13. I bet he's more than 13. I mean, it seemed to me he had more than three rebounds in the second half. And somebody must have paid the stat crew, Pat Dares. Uh, I, 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 thought, I thought big number five got his hands on more than three of them in the second half. But he just got to be, you know, he's got to do what he does. And he had open shots today, and he made them, and that's what he's got to do. He's not, you know, we, we're not, KJ in no way, shape, or form is going to get 29, but he can't get 13. Is his leadership helping maybe some of these freshmen? He's been great, man. He's, he's been he's been terrific. And the thing about KJ is, you know, he has he wasn't very vocal. He's gotten a lot more vocal. But then they see what he does and how he works. You know, there he's a guy. We got guys, man. They, I mean, they you look around. Where in the hell they go? You know, they're over there tying their shoes. They're you know, they found every which way there is to get out of practice. KJ's never out. No, he's like Deshaun was. He's, he's never out of practice. Uh, we got other guys, man. They, they, they got it. It's almost like clockwork when they go to the bathroom. You know what I mean? It's every day. You know? It's, uh, I mean, I personally, I'm not that regular. <laughs> <laughs> and you know, but you know what they're doing. They're trying to get out of practice. That's all. So. Can you see that he's done. helping them with his leadership? Oh, absolutely he is. Absolutely he is. That's right. And when he talks, they listen. That's good. Confidence-wise for your team, was it good to have this win two days after the loss to Kent State? I mean, can we be honest? Who looked at the schedule didn't think we'd win this one? <laughs> <laughs> I mean, let's be honest. You know, and then I, I didn't, I told them that. I don't lie to them. And, I, and that's, what the, that's what the older guys will tell the freshmen. If he says they're good, now they're good. And, and, and if they're not, he'll tell you they're not. Um, Anything else?